Hi, kindergartners. Welcome to your TV classroom. Today is Thursday, January 7th, and we are so glad you are here. I kind of have the giggles today. Mr. Kevin and I were giggling right before we hit record. I'm in a pretty good mood. How are you feeling today? Let's check in with our zones. Let's look at our chart. Hmm. Are you feeling sick or sad or tired or calm and happy or frustrated and wiggly? Are you mad like Mr. Kevin? Hmm. I'm feeling green. I'm really happy and calm. I might be a little yellow. My giggling might be a little silly, but I'm really ready to learn. If you're not ready to learn, remember to do some deep breathing or some chilly hugs and get yourself as close to green as you can today for our lesson. We are going to do five and tens frames. So take a look and tell me how many do you see without counting all the dots? Are you ready? Here we go. How many do you see? Hmm. Oh, I see that many too. I see two and two, which I know makes four. How many do you see now? Oh, wait. There's two and two. <gasps> and they just added two more. They added one right here, and they added one right here. So what's four and two more? It's six, or you might see three and three, three and three make six. Great job, kindergartners. Oh, if this is six, how many is that? Six and two more is eight, or four and four make eight, four and four make eight. Two and six make eight. Uh-oh. Mabel, what happened? We had eight and then they took one away. How many do we have now? How did you know that, Mabel? How did you know it was seven? Oh, because one less than seven is eight. If I'm on the number line and I'm at eight and I hop back one, I get to seven. How else would you know this is seven? Pebble, what do you see? Three and four. Oh, we did that yesterday. No, on Tuesday. Three and four make seven. Do it with me. Three and four make seven. Great job. Wait a minute. Three and four make seven. Four and three makes. Yep, you got it. Seven. Nice job. Today, we're learning to find the number pairs that make six and seven. Are you ready? Let's take a look. How many blue dots do you see? Six. How many red dots do you see? Nine. How did you know this was nine? Five and four make nine. How did you know the blue dots were six? Five and one make six. Kiss your brains. Oh, let's go to our whiteboard. And Mr. Kevin, we can just be on our whiteboard for right now. So, I'm going to draw a line here. And we're going to figure out all the ways to make six. Okay? And we're going to use our counters to get six counters out. And I'm going to do this. Oops. There we go. How did I make six? What do you see? Five and one. On your whiteboard, can you write five plus one? And with me, you're gonna say it. Five and one make six. Okay, now Mabel, watch. I'm not gonna put any on and I'm not gonna take any off. I'm just going to flip one. Now, how did I make six? How many reds do you see? Four plus two. Four plus two makes six. Four and two make six. You do it. Great job. Let's flip another one. What do you think is going to happen? How many reds do you think we're going to have? What do you think, Pebble? You think three? Oh, look at that. Three and three. Three and three make six. Now, that's interesting. 
And we were doing making 10, we noticed it went 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This goes 5, 4, 3. What do you think is going to be next? You think it might be a 2? Let's put it there. 1, 2, 3. What do you think is going to be the second part? You think 4? Let's try it. Flip 2 and 4. 2 and 4 make 6. Okay. We'll flip one more. What do we get? 1 and 5 make 6. Okay, now let's go to our PowerPoint for the 6 and let's write two ways to make 6. Which two should we pick? Hmm. I don't know, Mr. Kevin. I think we should do 4 and 2. And what do you think, Pebble? Three and three? Okay, three and three. Two ways to make six. Now we need to make seven. So let's go back to our whiteboard. Let's erase all the ones that made six. And we're going to write a seven on the top. Can you write a seven on the top? If you have your counters, you could do the counters along with me. If not, you could be drawing or you could just be watching me move my counters. That's fine too. Okay, we'll wait for the whiteboard to pop up. Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> Here we go. What do you see? How many reds do you see? Six and one. Six and one make seven. Now remember that pattern we saw with making 10? In the pattern we saw with making six, where it went down by one each time on the left and up by one each time on the right, I wonder if that same pattern is going to happen here. What do you think? Do you think it's going to happen? Shall we see? Okay. Let's flip one. Now what do we have? Five plus two makes seven. Five plus two makes seven. <gasps> six, five, one, two. It's looking like it might. Let's try one more and see. What do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's going to be four for the first part? Four reds? Four plus three. Let's try and go all the way down to one plus six, and then we'll test it out and see if we're right. What's going to come next? Six, five, four, three. One, two, three, four, six, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five. Hey, look, five and two, two and five, four and three, three and four, six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six and one and one and six. Okay, let's see if it worked. We got to check this one. Okay. Three reds, four yellows? Yes. Aww. Two reds, five yellows. Whoop, whoop. One red, six yellows. Our pattern worked, kindergartners. That's so fun when patterns work. Let's go back to our PowerPoint and let's add in two ways to make seven. I would like you to write two, your two favorite ways that make seven. What do you think in Pebble? Mm -hmm. I really like five and two as well. It really helps me see the tens frame because I know it's five on the top and two on the bottom. It's one of my favorite ways to make seven. Five and two. How about three and four? Okay, three and four. Awesome. Okay. Now you're going to help me make these numbers, but you are going to practice writing the numbers that we make. So first of all, you need to practice writing the number six. So you're going to go down and around and make a six. I need this on highlighter. Curve down, back around, and you have the number six. How many reds do you see? Five. How many more reds do I need to make six? Or how many yellows do I need to add to make six? Mm -hmm. Five and one make six. Say it with me. Five and one make six. Okay, we're going to make seven. Remember I did that thing where I said all the top and two on the bottom filled in make seven. So I'm going to do that. All the tops filled in 
two on the bottom. Practice writing seven. How many reds do you see? A two, you know, two and five make seven. Do it with me. Two and five make seven. Let's check. Two, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, it made seven. Okay, practice writing your seven. Little line over, slant it down. How many reds are there? Four reds. Let's see how many yellows we need until seven. The five on the top and the two on bottom. How many yellows did we draw? One, two, three. Because four and three make seven. Your turn. Four and three make seven. Oh, very good. Now I want you to show on your whiteboard or with your counters two ways to make seven. Go ahead. I'm going to give you two, uh, one minute to do that. Ready? Go. And make sure you write the two parts that make seven next to it, like six and one or four and three. All right, let's look at our whiteboard. Let's check and see if you found two ways to make seven. Are you ready? Let's see the whiteboard. Okay, did you pick two of these ways? Check, six and one, or five and two, or four and three, or three and four, or two and five? or one and six. If you show two of those ways, kiss your brain. Nice job, kindergartners. You're gonna do more of this work for your homework today. You're gonna do page 213 and 214, practicing making the number. So if it says six and you see only one, yellow, one red, you need to color in yellow boxes until you get to six and tell how many reds and how many yellows. And you're going to do that for six, seven, seven, six, seven. You're going to practice the ways to make those numbers. Today, did we build the parts? Mm -hmm. Did we tell the parts? Mm -hmm. And did we tell what number they made? Four and two make six. Four and three make seven. Did we do that? We did. That means we learned to find number pairs that make six and seven. Kiss your brain, kindergartners. You will need your learning buddy for your time with Miss Oslin today. When I'm done, you're going to have your PE break. Make sure that you get a drink of water and use the bathroom and take care of your needs before your lesson with Miss Oslin. Have a great lesson and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, everybody. My name is Chick Street Man and I'm a musical ambassador for peace and human rights. And the Northwest Sinfonietta asked me to show you a little bit of what it is that I go through to warm up in the morning or before I go on stage uh, later in the evening. So this is a little fun thing that we can do because sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're feeling good, but things tend to happen. Maybe it's raining and maybe there's no food in the refrigerator or maybe your mom or your brother or your sister or your teacher or a good friend says something to you that tends to want to bring you down, but you don't have to go down. You can keep yourself feeling up by saying a little something to yourself that goes like, I feel so good. Say, I feel so good. I feel so good. And then you get a little rhythm into it, okay? So you say, I feel so good. Uh, uh, 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 when your mind is happy, so is your body. When your mind is happy, so is your body. I feel so good. Uh, uh, I feel so good. Uh, uh. And then once you're feeling good, then you want to share it with everybody else around you. 
And But before we even do that, and you're going to share it with anybody else, it's important to warm your voice up a little bit. So I have a little technique that I use to warm my voice up that goes like this. You say, mm, 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 mm. you just close your mouth one time and say, mm. so I'm going to teach you how to do it. All you got to do is just close your mouth and one time, very gently say, mm. Right? And you say, you do it two times, you say, mm, 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 mm. I guess, mm, 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 mm. that was four times, okay? But you put a little rhythm to it, and it goes like this. <laughs> so then later on in the evening, when you're hungry and you're back home, and, um, yeah, there's no food on the table. You can say, Where's the dinner, Mama? Where's the dinner, Daddy? Just don't tell him I taught you how to do that, okay? So, this is all about relaxing and enjoying feeling yourself relax in your body. Thank you. You know, sometimes you may be feeling up, and sometimes you may be feeling down. But I believe there's always going to be some love coming around.
Hi kindergartners, welcome back from your break. I hope you had an opportunity to take care of your needs and also gather your materials. And once again, Mrs. Uslin has made a mistake. I forgot to have you also grab your whiteboard and markers. So take a moment if it's nearby and carefully grab that and then come back to me. As you're doing that, let's review your job. Every day when we come together, your job is to listen, share, and read. And you're a strong listener when you have active listening posture. So let's practice that together. Eyes watching. Eyes watching. Ears listening. Ears listening. Voice, quiet. Voice quiet. Body still. Body still. And even if you're showing active listening posture, sometimes we still need to remind ourselves to focus. So if you find yourself thinking about something else, give yourself a gentle, positive reminder Focus, self, focus. Focus. We are continuing to learn to own more letters. Let's warm up our brains and let's sing our alphabet song. While we sing, make sure that you're looking at the letters, making the connection between what the print looks like and what you call them so that your brain is able to transfer that knowledge into your reading and your writing when you're working independently today. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. A, A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with us? Well done. All right, you will remember. We go through the same routine to learn every letter. We, say it with me, name it, sound it, write it, use it. And we're gonna continue learning two letters today. First, we name it. This letter is H. Name this letter. H. This is a capital H. You'll see a capital H at the beginning of a sentence or at the beginning of a name of a person or a town or any other proper nouns. This is a lowercase h. Name this letter H. You will see a lowercase h in the middle or end of a word or later on in a sentence. This letter is called U. Name this letter U. This is a capital U. You can tell because it's tall. This is a lowercase U. Name U. U. The second thing we do when we learn a letter is we sound it. We say the sound that the letter usually makes. H will usually say the soft, breathy sound, like in hot dog and heart. Sound the letter H. You, the U will usually make a short uh sound, like an umbrella or up. Say the uh sound, uh. Now the third thing we do when we are learning to own a letter is we write it. So get your marker, plug in the cap, and make sure you're saying the letter formation pathway with me. That will help you better remember how to write the letters when you're writing independently. All right, capital H is a letter that is tall. Let's get, oh, blurry whiteboard. How are, oh no, we're good. You know what? I think we're gonna be all right here. Okay, pens up, line down, up and over a scooch, line down, little line connecting. This, oh look, there it goes. This is a capital H. Let's write a lowercase h. Pens up, line down, back up a bit, bump around and down. This is a lowercase h. H usually says, Name this letter, H. Sound this letter, 
erase. This is a capital U. Name this letter, U. Sound this letter, uh. It's a letter that is tall, so pens up, line down, hook around, and strut. You know what, I don't like how that looks. I'm gonna try that one again. That was a little too skinny and pointy for me. Okay, pens up, line down, hook around, and straight back to the top. That's much better. This is a lowercase u. Name this letter, u. Sound this letter, uh. Pens out, line down, hook around, straight back up, line down. We have written the letter u. Name this letter, u. Sound this letter, uh. Wow. Okay, we named them, we wrote it, we sounded it, and now we're going to use it. Here we go, let's do an H again. Pens up, line down, up and over a scooch, line down, little line connecting. And a lowercase h is pens up, line down, up, bump around, and down. Now, think about what is a word that you know that starts with H where it says, <sighs> take some think time and put a finger up for each word you can think of. Turn and tell your learning buddy every word that you can think of that starts with <sighs> Okay, Mabel, hot dog, heart, hair, horse, so many words that start with oh. Okay, let's practice with our other letter that we are using, which is U. Pens up, line down, hook up, straight back to the top. And then a lowercase u is pens out, line down, hook back up, line down. Now you will usually say ah. Uh. So think of as many words as you can with a U saying, ah, uh, and put a finger up for each word that you can think of. Turn and tell your learning buddy everything you're thinking. Mabel, I'm thinking umbrella, up, under, ugly, so many words that start with you saying, ah. Uh. Friends, we are learning to own more letters. And today, we can add the letters H and U to our list of letters that we can use when we are reading and writing. Now, let's review some of the letters that we have learned so far, because we've learned so many that we just don't have time to practice all of them together every day. Now, of course, Go off and practice them independently, saying the letter formation pathways while you're reading and writing by yourself today. Here we go. Name this letter, B. Sound this letter, B. Let's write this letter. Pens up, line down, back up, bump around, bump around. Name this letter, B. B says B. Good, pens up. Line down, back up a scooch, bump around on the front like a belly. Name this letter, B. Sound this letter, B. Erase. Oh, this is our other letter that we learned earlier this week. This is the letter C. C says K. Excellent, pens up, bump back around and stop. Now a lowercase c is the same, it's just small, so pens up. Bump back around and stop. Name these letters, C. Sound these letters, K. Erase. Okay, name this letter, D. Sound this letter, D. Let's write this letter, pens up, line down, back up, big bump around. This is a lowercase d, D says D. Pens out, bump back around and stop. Line up and down. Remember, the bump on the D is on the back like a diaper. D says D. Erase. 
Ooh, this is the letter E. E says eh. Pens up, line down, back up, little line out, and out, and out. Lowercase e, pens out, little line out, bump back around, and stop. Name this letter E. Sound this letter eh. Erase. Next letter, name this letter, F. Sound this letter, F. Let's write this letter. Pens up, line down, back to the top, little line out, and out. A lowercase f, we say pens up, hook from the top, line down, little line across. Name these letters, F. Sound these letters, F. Erase. It's our new one. Did you remember? Name this letter H. Sound this letter. <sighs> Let's write this letter. Pens up, line down, up and over a scooch, line down, little line connecting. Oh, name this letter H. Sound this letter. <sighs> Let's write this letter. Pen up, line down, back up a bit, bump around, and down. Name these letters, H. Sound these letters, <sighs> erase. Okay, name this letter, I. Sound this letter, I. Let's write this letter. Pens up, line down, line across the top, line across the bottom. Lowercase i, pens out, line down, float a dot above. Name these letters. I, sound these letters, I, erase. Name this letter, K, sound this letter, K. Let's write this letter. Pens up, line down, up and over a scooch, slanted line in, slanted line down. And a lowercase k is pens up, line down, up and over a scooch, halfway up, slanted line in, slanted line down. Name these letters, K. Sound these letters, K. Erase. You remember the one? Oh, good. O says, ah, excellent. Pens up, bump back around, travel all the way around. And a lowercase o has the same shape, it's just a letter that is small. So pens out, bump back around, travel all the way around. Name these letters, O, sound these letters, ah. Name this letter, P, sound this letter, P. Pens up, line down, back, bump around. Oh, this P, it's just a letter that falls, so pens out, line down below, back up, bump around. Name these letters, P. Sound these letters, P. Erase. Oh, this is our other new one. Name this letter, U. Sound this letter, U. Uh. Pens up, line down, hook up, all the way to the top. Lowercase U is pens out, line down, hook around, straight back up to the top, line down. Name these letters, U. Sound this letter, U. Uh. Name this letter, V. Sound this letter, V. Let's write this letter. Pens up, slanted line down, slanted line up. And a lowercase v is a letter that is small, so we say pens out, slanted line down, slanted line up. Erase. Next letter. Name this letter. Z. Sound this letter. Z. Let's write this letter. Pens up. Little line out. Slanted line down. Little line out. Now, a lowercase z has the same shape. It's just a letter that is small. Pens out. Little line out. Slanted line down. Little line out. Oh, kindergartners, you have learned to own so many letters. Make sure you erase your board, 
Make sure you get your marker closed all the way so it clicks shut. And I'm gonna remind you that your independent work today while you're reading is to continue reading for longer and longer periods of time. Practice looking for the letters that you know, reading all the way through words. Look at the pictures and think about what are the sounds that you're hearing in the pictures. You could also think about rhyming with the pictures. You could practice clapping the syllables of what is in the pictures of your book. You are also going to practice writing. We're talking about letter writing. So you're gonna write a letter, make sure that you draw pictures that tell what is happening in your letter or story. Make sure you can label your picture and you can also write all the way through words using all the letters and sounds that you know. Now it's time for our affirmation. This is the time when we get to say positive things about ourselves before we go off to complete our independent tasks. Your affirmation today is I am the best version of myself. Practice saying that with me. I am the best version of myself. Excellent job today, kindergartners. Thank you so much for working with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you back here tomorrow in our TV classroom. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.